And what we have is what may well be the most ancient uh, extra biblical Christian text is called the Didache. And in the Didache, what you have is a reference to, and here, what's fascinating is you even have a man like J.N.D. Kelly, who is an Anglican, in his book, Early Christian Doctrines. He acknowledges that from day one, Christians understood the Eucharist as a sacrifice, the sacrifice of Christ, the New Testament sacrifice, and he references the Didache, right, <laughs> which, which talks about the Eucharist a, and as the fulfillment of the prophecy of Malachi chapter 1, verses 7 through 11. As you probably know, Norlin, in Malachi, if you look at the first six verses, the prophet Malachi is hammering the priests, the J Jewish priests, because of their laxity, their hypocrisy, they're taking the, the lame and the blind among the herds instead of the best, the first, and offering them to God. And, and he kind of, God kind of sarcastically says, offer this to your king and see if he'll take it, right? <laughs> and, and he says, I will not accept these sacrifices at your hand. And then right after that, he says in verse 7, for, now normally conjunctions connect with what you're saying, right? I'm not going to accept your sacrifice and all of this for from the rising of the sun to the setting of the same, a perfect, a pure, a clean oblation is being offered everywhere from the nations, the ethnoi in Greek, right? The, the pagans. Now, Christians all understood, Norlin, that this would not be referring to the pagans of that time because some of them were offering things like, you know, humans. So... You know, it's not referring to their sacrifices back then, but prophetically it's referring to the Eucharist. And you see from day one, like I said, the Didache, you'll see St. Irenaeus in his Against Heresies uses that same text of Scripture when he talks about the Eucharist in 180 A.D. in Against Heresies, and he uses unmistakable language that this is the, the flesh of our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ. And then, of course, you have famously Norlin, uh, St. Ignatius of Antioch, who wrote seven letters, uh, one to Rome and to the various churches of Asia Minor, and he's on his way to martyrdom, and in his letter to the Smyrnians, as I recall, I'm going off memory here, I believe that it's chapter 8, paragraphs 2 and 3, as I recall, it's Norlin. chapter 6, I think. It's, it's yeah. right around there. Uh, he says they, he's referring to Gnostics here, he says they abstain from the Eucharist and from prayer because they deny that the Eucharist is the flesh of our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ, the same flesh which suffered and died yeah. for our salvation. Norlin, he is writing this in about 107 A.D. This is a man who knew the Apostle John, according to Tertullian, he was ordained by St. Peter. That may or may not be true, but he certainly knew the Apostle John. Um, and he writes in such explicit terms that it is unmistakable. I would encourage everyone, get a hold of my CD set, Living Bread, because I give you a whole litany, as I said, of examples from the fathers. Let me tell you, uh, again, from my personal experience, 30 years ago, I... I had read Jimmy Swaggart's book, Kale, you know, <laughs> yeah. uh, when I was a Protestant. And he made you Catholic. <laughs> That's right, Catholicism versus Christianity. And in that book, he says the Christians of the first 300 years of the Christian era were not Catholic. They were evangelical and Pentecostal believers. Now, of course, I believed that because, hey, Jimmy Swaggart said well, it. Jimmy right? said it. I mean, he, I mean it's got to be true. Until I started reading those fellows, and then I, I concluded— there's no way Jimmy could have read these <laughs> fathers and concluded what he said.